what age did you feel you might be a little different from others around you? I was nine when I was diagnosed, and I was in second grade when I realized that I was different from other people around me, especially in my class. Um, I think that was like the first time I actually got harassed and picked on by the kids in my class. I knew you were different around the age of three, three and a half, when you were in preschool. I could see the interaction that you had with the other students, how they viewed you differently, and singled you out uh, quite a bit. It was very heartbreaking and emotional because I thought maybe it was just um, a possibility of it just being a small age gap, but I knew at that point, um, as you were graduating from preschool, that that might have been a bigger issue, and how a couple of the kids uh, really taunted you in preschool. I thought that only happened in grade school, but it was happening as they were playing with you in the playground, and I would go and sit outside the playground to see you. For me, it was when we'd do your homework, we'd be, you know, you'd be trying to learn and I'd be trying to teach you to go over it and it was a little bit harder for you. I mean, you know, your mom would used to mention to me, you know, I think, you know, Amber might have a problem and no parent wants to, uh, you know, you kind of get into denial and say, you want to think, oh, my child's different, my child's different. But like I said, like your mom mentioned, you going to school, being in the playground, seeing you seeing him by yourself, to me, it was, like your mom said, it was heartbreaking. What do you think? I'm sitting here thinking, what about girls? We've seen a few, but not very many, okay? And usually the girls that we see that are successful are being diagnosed as adults, mm. okay? So we're not seeing, like, like, I've known you since you were nine. The girls that we've seen have been much more involved, and we don't see them that early. Girls come to attention around middle school of what's happening in a family, because it becomes a family issue. Right. And how is, why is this gonna affect the family? I think growing up, or not even growing up, now, today, you've always had a lot of challenges that needed to be faced. And I don't think that without mom and dad, you would have been able to face them alone. I didn't realize that you were different until like I was in sixth grade and you were in high school and mom and dad would like go to your school and tell us like, oh, about like what happened, like how you would have difficulties um, learning and also making friends. So for me, I didn't fully understand until then and they would just um, try to explain it to me in a way where I understood and uh, it was hard for me first to to um I could, back in the day when you, I had you for high school and you, your mom was yelling at me and yelling <laughs> at everybody it's like they didn't know really what to do with you mm -hmm. I mean nobody did it's kind of interesting but it's kind of interesting that I can't think of the name of a girl in 45 years who started out and that and has had the same outcome as some of the boys. Okay. I think you've gone pretty far, far like farther than any other autistic kid that, that I know that we know or heard of that has ever had help or hasn't had help. So I don't think that you being diligent and pursuing your education is going to be the challenge. I just hope my hope for you is that at the end of the day and like when you're older that you're happy, mm -hmm. I guess. I hope that whatever you choose to do, you're happy with doing that. Yes, you did it, okay. And it was, wasn't easy. It wasn't. Okay, it wasn't it's, a, it's a lot, it's a one, it's a, it's a hard journey. It's a hard journey on the people with autism. It's a hard journey on parents. If I didn't have that whole encounter with your mother, you wouldn't be here right now, in my opinion. We spend years talking about 
autism and disabilities. We don't spend enough time talking about autism and abilities. I've learned to adapt by communicating with people. I didn't have that help or from outside resources that people normally get. I had to learn everything from my family. Like they were my teachers. It was like, okay, I had to mimic everything they were doing so that way I knew what to do, how to cue things in conversations with people. Even if I had like that one little tick or something, it's like, nope, don't say that. It was kind of like a process and elimination every time I'm in a conversation with somebody. Is autism something we need to fix? Maybe not. Maybe it's something we need to figure out how to help people be able to function in society and be happy. And my advice would be to believe in yourself, that you can do it. I don't care if people say that you're different from them because you have autism or any other disability, you are a gifted, talented, and special human being. And no matter what happens, you just got to push forward. And I wouldn't want to take some, like, special magic pill or cure for it to go away. Because then I wouldn't be me. I wouldn't be Amber. The best advice I could give them is never give up on their children, any child on the spectrum or with any type of disability. And key is early intervention. Like I want to be able to be like, hey, I made something that made a difference in someone's life. And I was a part of that and made that. Very, very pleased. Your story is going to help kids. You can. Kids and adults, I should say that, they're, they're in your same situation.